So covering the chaos of a trade show without the chaos of being on the show floor is a different experience, but there's still a lot of news this week coming out from Computex 2021, the virtual show. So in this one, we're gonna be talking about 880's XPG memory that's targeting DDR5-12600 for the spec with overclocking. We'll also be going over ASRock's new X570S chipset or motherboard implementation. We'll be going over ASRock Thin Mini ITX board. Sabrent has a new SSD that is called, wait for it, Plot Ripper. And we'll be talking about some other news from the show and all the new hardware for the past couple days. Before that, this video is brought to you by Asus and the Asus Tough Gaming B550 Plus Wi-Fi motherboard, ready for AMD Ryzen CPUs. The Tough Gaming B550 board comes in ATX and Micro ATX variants with key features, including a Wi-Fi 6 module, 2.5 gigabit ethernet, a fanless chipset heatsink for quiet operation, and a focus on stability and uptime. Learn more about the Tough Gaming B550 Plus Wi-Fi motherboard at the link in the description below. These news recaps are going to be on the quicker side for us. Typically, if you haven't seen it, when we do trade show coverage, we're doing one booth at a time, focusing on a couple products, get as much depth as we can and go through it very quickly. So at a convention center, we'll normally do these videos in about five minutes or so. And so these are going to follow that format with a little bit more length on it because we have some additional stories packed into each video. So ADATA's XPG memory plans for DDR5 uh, have at this point been detailed by the company. The company notes that it has DDR5 memory lined up with overclocking capabilities uh, aiming upwards of DDR5-12600. So this would be for ADATA's new caster series. The series will range from DDR5-6000 to DDR5-7400 and 8 gigabytes, 16 gigabytes, and 32 gigabyte sticks or DIMMs with a focus on the overclocking capabilities. ADATA released three photos of its new XPG DDR5 memory modules and it said that it would, quote, offer a noticeable improvement over DDR4 modules. At the lower end, ADATA said that it'll have DDR5 4800 memory available, and all of this is going to be at 1.1 volts for the base spec. It can go higher than that, but 1.1 is the new baseline for DDR5. Previously, you'd see in the range of 1.2 and then 1.35 once you start getting XMP enabled for a lot of them. As with all DDR5 solutions, ECC and PMIC are both present on the ADATA XPG solutions. This isn't going to be news because it'll be on everything. PMIC is the power management integrated circuit, and then ECC is the same existing technology except applied to consumer memory with DDR5. Uh, timings are not yet announced for these ADATA XPG kits. Timings will be very loose compared to what we're used to hearing with DDR4, but for DDR5, we need to uh, get to actually testing things and seeing the, the rollout to see where the timings end up landing. Up next is ASRock with its X570S and B550 motherboards. X570S has been in the news a little bit as a rumored topic. It's an informal way to refer to the updated X570 chipset, which moving forward as the vendors move to this change from AMD, they'll be able to get rid of the fans on the motherboards because of the power consumption reduction with the S class X570 chipsets. That is not an official AMD name, by the way. Uh, it's only called X570 in an official capacity. Of course, with this change, there's plenty of opportunity for marketing shenanigans. ASRock oddly called the elimination of the chipset fan, quote, a revolutionary fanless design. Uh, two things here. There's no fan, so it therefore can't be revolutionary if we're gonna be we're gonna be picky about it. Uh, and secondly, ASRock has made literally hundreds of boards without fans. So kind of a weird thing to say, but we get the gist of it. Regardless, ASRock advertises 2.5 gigabit per second killer uh, networking included. That is using the killer E3100 ethernet option on both the X570S and the B550 Riptide series boards. Those are the new boards. And ASRock graphics card holder is also noted on the list of accessories for the Riptide series. For some reason, this is patent pending. And it screws into the motherboard. It supports video cards. And also ASRock has what it calls lightning game ports. Fortunately, ASRock has produced this helpful graphic for us. We want to really emphasize here that this is an official graphic from ASRock and it is not a joke. We did not make this. As you can see, mouse input is smooth traffic, which is because mouse smoothing allows the mouse cursor to fit down the USB wire better, and so there's more space in the USB tube for the mouse cursor. Keyboards are also smooth traffic, we assume because of the lubricant on mechanical switches, 
Unfortunately, however, using a keyboard and a mouse at the same time creates what is known as a traffic crowded situation, where the keyboard letters and the mouse cursor sometimes get stuck in traffic jams. This can cause some input to use its horn to honk at other input, which obviously creates audio input, thus further exacerbating the traffic jam. Fortunately, ASRock has a solution for this well-documented problem, and that solution is lightning gaming ports. I'm not really sure how they work. The graphic was the start and the end of it. This is why the trade shows are nice, because maybe we could talk to an engineer who actually knows something. Maybe there's something there that's actually interesting. We're never going to know, because that's what they've published. ASRock says, quote, ASRock Lightning gaming ports uniquely feature custom-engineered USB signal lanes to accommodate the latest gaming mice with ultra-high polling rates. Traditional USB signal design cannot fully support ultra-high report rate gaming peripherals, therefore limiting their performance and the user experience. Since we have literally no information to go on at this point, we're going to have to leave it there. Uh, we can't verify it further at this time. ASRock also has an X300 TM ITX board. This is kind of interesting for those of you in the enthusiast SFF space. So this is for ultra small PCs. It is a few days old. It's not truly Computex, but it's related and it's uh, within the last week or so. So ASRock announced this X300 TM-ITX motherboard. And this is a thin mini ITX solution with two SODIMM memory slots to help compact the footprint further. The board also drops the chipset, running on AMD's less popular X300 platform and relying on the CPU for everything. The board in the thin ITX form factor is 170 by 170 millimeters, which is most commonly used in all-in-one PCs. ASRock notes support for Ryzen 4000 APUs. No explicit mention of Ryzen 5000 APUs, but when this board was posted, they hadn't officially been announced yet, so that might change. And up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4-3200 SODIMM. The board is simple and small, and that's about all there is to it. Sabrent in the news now for its new Plot Ripper SSDs. That's weird to say. Uh, Sabrent announced its new Plot Ripper SSDs, trying to ride on the fad that is the Chia coin, another cryptocurrency that we've talked about in hardware news the last couple episodes. If you haven't seen it, that would give you a primer on it. Chia coin brands itself overtly as a green solution. It has a green paper instead of a white paper. And that is despite the fact that killing drives and causing a run on storage is the opposite of green, especially since drives use helium regularly now. Anyway, uh, Sabrent's new SSD uses a green motif in the marketing and the branding. Plot Ripper is an obvious pull from Chia Plots. It's part of the nomenclature for effectively mining Chia. You, you farm it you, after establishing a plot on a drive. Yes, it sounds like video game terminology. Uh, I assure you this is the actual terminology they use. And uh, Plot Ripper's main selling point here is drive endurance. Now, this is a legitimate selling point, even if you don't plan on doing anything with Chia. You can still use it for enterprise solutions, home enterprise solutions, home servers that need a lot of PE cycles, things like that. So there's still potentially something here that may interest you, even if you're not into the coin farming. Sabrin says this on the website, quote, Plot Ripper series SSD's endurance is enhanced to another level with life ex ex extension, that's not our typo, allowing you to upshift your plotting to next gear. Talk about mixing metaphors here. So life extension allows us to upshift our farm plots into an another gear. What? what? An anyway, Sabrin says that, quote, you do not have to do anything. You can simply fire up your laptop and get to work. Sabrent goes on to market its extension a few more times before listing the specs. Drives range from one terabyte to two terabytes in M.2 form factors with the terabyte written rating scaling 10,000 to 54,000 TBW on the two terabyte Plot Ripper Pro. No additional information was made available at the time of posting this. We've got two quick news stories for the rest of this one, and then we'll have another Computex mini news roundup probably tomorrow or a little bit later after this one goes up with additional news like Intel DG2 news in the time before uh, this segment was filmed and after the first part of this video was filmed, we had all the keynotes from Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, and really want to point this out. If you missed it, AMD has some actually genuinely really exciting news that we covered in a separate video. It's probably the most positive we've been in a video for a little while, at least this week. Uh, so really cool stuff that AMD is doing. We're not going to recover it here. Go check that video out. It's the one that's about AMD's 3D V-Cache. 
Uh, there was another one about AMD's product level stuff, but the 3D vCache is really cool, neat technology, and we were happy to report on that one. So check it out, because uh, that, that'll give you a bit of a, a positive tone for the last week, at least, to offset the 3080 Ti that we just reviewed. Okay, so last two stories. EVGA reflex analyzer mice are coming out. So you may remember NVIDIA's reflex analyzer solution that we looked at. Uh, I think it was last year at this point. And there's some cool stuff you can do with it on the media side, but usefulness in sort of the wider market is a little more debatable. The X17 and X15 gaming mice that EVGA released previously have now been updated, and they will include NVIDIA's reflex latency analyzer working with compatible NVIDIA G-Sync eSports displays, as they're branded. We previously covered this feature with a 360 hertz Dell monitor when it first launched. A mouse gets connected to the monitor, the monitor detects the input, and then the monitor waits for a corresponding change on the screen. This times the difference between the input and the output, and it gives a measurement of system latency, end-to-end -end system latency in total. Certain mice can self-report their own latency to the monitor, but for mice that don't support reflex, NVIDIA maintains a database of average latencies. Mouse latency is relatively constant, so using a constant value rather than a direct measurement is still fairly accurate and would work in uh, basically any use case. EVGA's official reflex support won't really change significantly any of the results that would have been measured thus far anyway, but it might help demonstrate the value of the 8 kilohertz response rate in their mice. But a lot of other things matter too in a mouse, like the overall design and the form factor and the comfort. But uh, that's it for the reflex analyzer stuff. Kingston also launches its Fury gaming business. So HyperX was previously a Kingston brand. Kingston is selling HyperX to HP. And HyperX has been around a long time at this point. It was early 2000s or, or around then, I think, that it first started. But really picked up speed around the 2009 to 2013 era and uh, became its own company in that era as well and pushed to make a lot of peripherals and headsets, things of that nature, while also branding memory. So Kinston would make the memory. HyperX would brand it often as Fury or Beast or something on those lines. Fury has now been pulled from just a memory module model name into an actual business unit within Kingston. So this is effectively replacing HyperX. And what HyperX did, the reason we bring this up, is because if you see the name Fury pop up on Newegg in the future as a memory vendor, uh, if it doesn't say Kingston in front of it, you just see Fury, you might think, I'm not going to buy RAM from some random vendor I've never heard of. But it is actually all just Kingston. And the reason they do different names for this is because Kingston actually doesn't want to disrupt its relationship with the enterprise. This is, it's kind of a, it's a weird corporate thing that they do to isolate stuff. But Kingston's trying to isolate its gaming business from its enterprise business because it doesn't want the gaming business reputation to mar the business reputation. What in gaming could give Kingston a, a bad name for memory? Gamers are, Always professional and, and great. But Fury is going to be the new business unit. It is not, from what we understand now, picking up peripherals. It looks like that's going over to HP with HyperX. And HyperX is leaving behind the memory unit, as we understand it now, for Kingston to continue via Fury. And uh, as a quick note, Kingston remains the number one memory supplier by market share, according to Trendforce. And uh, Corsair is probably its closest competitor these days, especially in the consumer space. So that's something to keep an eye on. But that's it for this quick recap. We'll have another one talking about Intel DG2 and some other interesting news from the past couple of days as Remote Computex comes to a close. You can check out our keynote coverage from the past week as well. The Intel one's really fun to watch. You won't get a lot of product info from it, but it is entertaining at their expense. The NVIDIA one. Basically, we wrapped it into the 3080 Ti review, and then the AMD one had one set of product coverage and, and one set on the 3D vCache. Please go check that out. It's, it's really cool, and we think you'll enjoy the technology aspect of it. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more as always. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net or patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Tell us that directly, and we'll see you all next time.